So my name is Armin Knoll. I work at the IBM Research Lab in Zurich in Switzerland and I'm uh, responsible for the nanoprobe fabrication. So this is a type of lithography using an, a scanning probe techniques in order to do lithography. And it's a small group, about five people, and we uh, try to improve this technique to the commercial level now. So what we do is actually we have a scanning probe type technique, which means that you have a very sharp tip scanning the surface. And you, uh, the nice thing about this in comparison to com conventional lithography is that um, you can switch on the, the um, interaction mechanism between the tip and the sample in order to do lithography. So with one, from left to right, we basically write a structure. And from right to left, we switch off the tip and we read the structure ba back using the same tip. So you, can, you get a direct free feedback of what you have done um, during the writing process. So you can adjust the writing parameters. So you get a very precise patterning and very controlled patterning as well. And so what we use in, in fact for writing is that we heat the tip to a, to a temperature of um, about 800 degrees, the, the top level um, heater. The tip transfers this heat onto the sample and the sample then evaporates. So the polymer resists beneath, beneath the, the tip, evaporates, does a chemical reaction, the polymer decomposes into the monomers and the monomers are volatile and evap evaporate by themselves basically. And that's how we can very precisely um, remove material from a surface. This actually works um, with such a high precision that you can control the depth of what you, you want to write at a nanometer scale. So the accuracy of uh, depth writing is about one nanometer absolute. And using this feedback scheme from taking the read image on the way back of the image, you can adjust the writing level to such a control, basically, to, to reach one nanometer of absolute depth control. And right now, the, the tool is in a state where you can focus, uh, you can address the, the researcher at, a, at the university level. So um, you can uh, go to nanoscale structures, you can write your pattern at a very precise position, and um, you can, it's a very fast turnaround method as well. And this works very well. You have very good control over this process. And so the, the first entry point to market would be really to, to address the professors for scientific applications to, um, for example, connect nanowires to electrodes or do something like that. That's where we are right now. So the project originates, the, the silicon cantilever technology originates from the Millipede project, which is known from, uh, to, to a lot, um, broader um, audience. Uh, it, it used to be a, a data storage project, so we used multiple uh, tips in order to store data in a polymer film by uh, pressing little indents into the polymer film. And the levers we used at that time for this um, data storage project, we still use for the, now for the nanotechnology project. Um, and uh, so the, um, this is a, basically an extension of this Millipede project and that's how it got started. The resolution we get or the, the, the specifications we have for our tool are a little bit comparable to um, e-beam lithography specifications. So in terms of resolution, we reach uh, feature sizes of, um, we can write parallel lines with a pitch of about 20 nanometers, so half pitch of 10 nanometers. This is the best we can achieve right now. Um, we get throughput values uh, also in the order of um, e-beam lithography. You have to take into account that um, we write pixels at a pixel step of about 5 to 10 nanometers and we reach uh, patterning speeds of up to 500 kilohertz um, for writing pixels. And this is very fast for an AFM technique, and, but it compares well to the throughput values you get from um, e-beam lithography, so it's on par, approximately. And um, so basically what that means for the, for the tool is that you, can, uh, you don't have to wait for an hour, basically, until you see your field is finished. Yeah. Uh, the heat distribution in, this, in the polymer is very local, so the, the um, heating the, the, the surface locally basically means that you don't heat uh, the neighboring pixel very much. So the heat spread is on the order of a few nanometers, probably. The profile is very sharp, and also the chemical reaction for doing this evaporation has an exponential um, probability. So this gives you a very sharp um, profile of where the reaction takes place. So that's uh, also very nice. You don't have proximity effects to the neighboring pixel, pixels like other techniques. Um, this is a very special resist what we have to use because uh, we can heat the, the heater of the silicon tip up to 1,000 degrees. But this, this, tip, this heat has to be transmitted through the tip into the polymer sample. And if you use very sharp tips, what, what arrives at the sample is a, only half of the heater temp temperature, approximately. So you have to have a very um, 
temperature sensitive resist. I mean, 400 degrees is still high for, or 500 degrees is still high for an organic resist, but you have to keep in mind that you want to do the reaction within one microsecond, basically. And time temperature tells you that you need then resist materials which are thermally active on normal time scales already below 200 degrees. So that's why we developed actually a very special resist which reacts very nicely to this temperature um, stimulus and it reacts by decomposing into the monomers directly. So if you break one bond of the polymer chain, the whole chain falls apart and evaporizes basically. And this makes also the throughput of this technique very, very high and fast. Yeah. And in terms of smaller feature sizes, we tried to develop um, new resist materials. Not only the, po the polymer might be limiting in some sense because you always decompose a full change, chain of polymer. And so we try to go to small molecules, to work with small molecules really, to evaporate molecules one by one out of the surface. And in this um, range of molecules, you have much more knobs to turn in, order, in terms of uh, chemistry, how to uh, make the tip interact with the molecules and also with the uh, molecules interact with the substrate. And so there seems to be some room for improving the technology and, um, and the goal is actually to go towards five nanometers um, resolution. Yeah, at IBM, we create the, the IP for doing this technology, right? IBM holds the patents of the technology, and um, for IBM, the business of such a tool is not interesting per se. So the idea is to really spin that off to a company, license the IP to the company, and then uh, see how it grows, basically.